May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we celebrate the great feast of the first canonized saint of the new world, Saint Rose of Lima. Truly a wise virgin, what we heard in the scriptures, who kept our lamp filled with the sanctifying grace. Today, August the 30th, marks the feast of this great South American saint, the first canonized from the New World. The Peruvian, which she was born in Peru, lived a simple, austere, and penitential life of consecration to Almighty God, marked though by mysticism, by prayer and service to the poor. Although only 31 years old at the time of her death, she left a mark with her reputation of holiness that spread rapidly. St. Rose was beatified and canonized just over 50 years after her death in 1617. Peru's capital, established in 1535, was very much the new world at the time when Isabel Flores de Olivia was born. In 1586, the daughter of a Spanish cavalryman and an indigenous Peruvian woman, the young saint desired to read and write. Although no one deemed teaching such skills to young girls to be worth such investment. So Rose, what did she do? She decided to ask Jesus Christ to help her to read. The story goes that the saintly girl proved the divine assistance when she was able to tell her mother about a book she read then about her great companion in arms, St. Catherine of Siena. For this reason, among others, St. Rose is often depicted in art holding the divine child Christ, who also appeared to her on numbers of occasions. The name Rose, what about the name, beautiful name Rose, was earned a name by which she would be known for the rest of her life when she was only a young child. It was reported that her face was transformed into a version of a beautiful flower when she was a child. Her rosy cheeks and comeliness stayed with St. Rose into adulthood, when she earned a reputation for her physical attractiveness. St. Rose had decided, though, from an early age that she wanted to dedicate herself to Christ through a life of virginity. And so she became troubled when young suitors admired her beauty. Despite then the efforts of her family and friends, she turned down many men and their proposals for a life of marriage. She even took in the same mold as St. Clair of Assisi and other great saints to, to deaden their beauty, so to speak. She took extreme steps to ensure that she was no longer desirable to them, even rubbing pepper into her cheeks to scar them and chopping off her hair. St. Rose's desire to live a consecrated virgin was the great source of frustration and disappointment to her family. Her mother would often make her attend with her, Rose, at various gatherings of Lima, which is the capital of Peru, social elite. Along with this came the finery of which St. Rose detested. She would have preferred to stay at home and pray, but when she was unable to avoid these events, she would perform some acts of penance in exchange for participating in what she considered in a vain and indulgent lifestyle. Mature life then was patterned by the mystic Catherine of Siena, whose life 
of penance and prayer Rose adopted early in life after reading, as we said, her biography. In many ways, their personal stories overlap and are intertwined. Both Rose and St. Catherine are taking vows of virginity then, rejecting vanity and courtship to dedicate themselves to Jesus Christ as their bridegroom. Both saints offered an account of antagonistic mothers who served as blockades to their daughter's calling. Both received the stigmata. Both received the stigmata as a gift from their beloved bridegroom, binding them more closely to himself. They also both had the gift of prophecy. Saint Rose accurately predicted the date of her own death, the feast of Saint Bartholomew the Apostle, who we recently celebrated, to whom Rose was strongly devoted because of the intense suffering associated with his martyrdom. If you remember, he was flayed alive and then beheaded. Like Saint Catherine, Rose performed many strict penances in private, many of which seemed excessive or would seem excessive today. But no saint can be understood outside of the context of their own place and time. Intense penances and mortifications in this period, remember we are in the 16th century, were not only common at the time, but were encouraged by many in the church, especially those who sought to unite themselves more closely to Jesus Christ, our Savior. Also in canonizing her, the church endorsed her way of attaining, attaining this holiness. After she had felt the call to become a nun, St. Rose's family tried again to distract her. Although her father forbade her from entering the convent, he eventually bowed down to a degree and offered her a room to herself in the family home to pursue her life in which she was called. So basically she was a hermit in her own home. There she practiced her simple and austere life of mystical union with Christ through prayer, penance, and a growing apostolate to the poor and the sick of her city, Lima. St. Rose sustained herself and her efforts by embroidering clothing and vestments. She is thus the patroness of an embroiderers. Later, an account, St. Rose, had, a statue, had an account with the statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which convinced her it was not her calling to enter into religious life. She adopted then a life as a Dominican tertiary, locked up in this room, taking the Dominican habit while remaining in her family home. During this time, her life of prayer and penance became even more fervent and observant. For 15 years then, she would suffer terribly for hours at a time from desolation of spirit and aridity. Strict fasting was only broken to receive Holy Communion. Desiring to give all of herself to Christ like him, Saint Rose willingly desired to empty herself of all earthly comforts. She chose to sleep only two hours each night on the floor to so to afford herself more time in the art of prayer. Saint Rose imposed upon herself even a weighty silver crown with tiny spikes inside. She wore in the imitation of the crown of thorns wore worn by Christ in his passion. As with many other saints, Saint Rose saw her supernatural reception of the stigmata as a gift, that the wounds and pain of the suffering Christ drew her closer to him with whom she desired to have this mystical espousal. Such was her aim to the end, as was reported, her last words of Rose attested Jesus Jesus, Jesus, be with me always. Suffering then, dear brothers and 
justice in Christ, is what we learned today, affects us all. We cannot escape from the cross or from our sufferings. It is often said you can tell somebody's spiritual path, ask them a direct question, how do you value suffering? The willingness with which Rose adopted sufferings in this life, even taking them upon herself, teaches a valuable lesson to the world today which abandons or undervalues their dignity in the art of suffering. When suffering is something to be disdained at all costs, consider, for example, the widespread acceptance of and support for suffering eliminating practices today like euthanasia. But St. Rose's story concretely presents another way. Her life illuminates the gospel wisdom on suffering, keeping in Jesus Christ's mind his admission to the rich young man, the way to heaven is impossible without taking up the cross. Saint Rose reiterates this clear teaching of Christ by her very way of life, summed up best in a quote which was attributed to herself. She says, apart from the cross, there is no other ladder by which we may get to heaven. Saint Rose died then as she predicted on the feast of Saint Bartholomew in the year 1617. Her widespread acclaim, widespread acclaim was one of the contributing factors to that her canonization cause culminated in 1671. The speed, can you imagine, just 50 years after she died, she was a saint, the speed with which she was canonized is remarkable, especially in an age when few women were canonized. 400 years after her death, now St. Rose of Lima offers the witness for a gospel way of life that transcends such divisions and exists solely for Jesus Christ. She is the one, beautifully, who would hear the words from the Savior himself. Rose of my heart, be my bride. Rose of my heart, be my bride. She teaches us today the value of suffering for the love of Jesus Christ and the Blessed Virgin Mary. This is the wisdom of life to carry the cross with a generous heart for the salvation of all souls. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you, and thank you very much.